You know, it's been a while since we've seen the Lady in Black, Black and Pure on our shows. Well, I guess it's time she makes a little reappearance as we're about to see Goat Racing League's Global Strategy Team Race Next Gen Cup Series take on the fame track here at Darlington, South Carolina. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the Crusader, Christian Shriver. And if you couldn't quite hear a little bit from the uh, intro, my uh, throat is not quite up to par as we are going to be up to par with these drivers. So I'm going to do my best here, but... I apologize in advance to our drivers tonight, as well as Pedal and Racing League later on. It's going to be a little bit of a hard night. so. But we're going to get through this one way or another. We're going to get to the call. So, race fans, let's take a look at our starting lineup here. On the pole, in the 47 will be Joseph Gravala. To the outside, that will be the 18. That's Cameron DeRue. Row number two is going to be Michael Strickland. And the 88 is outside. And the 93 will be Bud Shearer. Row number three is going to be Nathan Bogart. And the five outside. And the 12, it's Aaron Action Jackson. Run number nine is Brock Page, and the 62 is outside is the two. That's Ricky Utting. Run number five is Christoph Hall in the 98. And the outside of him is Maurice Burnett in the eight. Run number six is going to be Brandon Burkhardt in the 83. And the outside will be the 76 of Mark Rodgen. Uh, Run number seven is going to be Charles Van Schaik in the uh, 23. The outside of them will be the 94. It is Justin Reynolds. Run number eight is Philip Schmitz in the 29s. Outside that, 53, Bill Hales. And finally, in run number nine, Sean Burke in the 95 with the 36 being piloted by Richard Crane. That is your starting lineup for the action at hand.
184 laps of the distance here. This should be a wild one from the get-go. Every driver for himself, everyone going to try and park up the numbers and pit up the positions. Darlington is no joke for how difficult this one's going to be. And as we take a look at that right now, here is your track tech talk presented by the Global Strategy Team Racing. The GOAT Racing have set their pace, set their bar high, but Darlington is a whole nother level. 1.3 miles in length. There are two different shaped areas as you see on the side. This is not a flat bank track. This is not a cornered off track. This is an extremely difficult track to master and follow with the story behind it, which I'll get a little later on into. But of course, turn one and two, famed for the outside speed you can carry, but in three and four, well, let's just say you better learn how to hit the brakes a little bit because you're gonna need to take that corner a lot tighter and a lot smoother. And of course, the lady in black referring to her famed name of those black marks and streaks you'll see left on the side of those walls. It happens so more often than not. That's one thing that makes Sterlington such a race and a classic to watch. Entering off through down off a of turn number four this time on by here. Race fans, Goat Racing hits the stage, hits the tone. Let's get to it. Green is out. We're underway. Well, already I was not surprised. We're going to see some drivers moving up front and moving the outside immediately. Joseph Gravala taking the early lead. Cameron DeRue and Butch here right on the tail. Brent Logue saying, how's your day so far? I hope you're having a good one here. Brent Logue, great to have you back on board here, sir. Been a pretty good day. Like I said, just currently dealing with uh, whatever the heck is stuck in my throat right now. And to be honest, folks, I don't know what it is. It's currently just being worked on and we'll continue to go through it. So I know I sound a bit off and I know I may have a few times where I'll go quiet for a second. That's just me catching my breath. Gamer Deere right now trying to get some ground here on Bud Shearer, though, out of the game. Looking for some positions and speed out of the out of the hold shot here. Rest your field currently. Just trying to stay out of trouble with the lady in black, if you will. 184 laps here at the distance. It's a long, hard drive from the get-go to the finish. There is no question there. Gillette's 98, Christoph Hall, you can see kind of staying a little bit lower to the banking, staying a little more controlled. A lot of drivers going high side out of the gate, but there's a reason why some of them are trying to take the extreme high side, and some are trying to be very careful on the middle. As you can see, Brock Page just kind of screeching just a little bit towards that top side. Christoph Hall gets a piece of it off for turn number three into four. Now, we're going to go on board here with Ricky Unning, and I want you to watch very, very carefully this corner exit of turn number two. Watch here. Do you see that little corner there? That is what the drivers are trying to avoid. When you come off that corner, there's a little bit of an indentation in there that not only kind of squares you off and makes you a little bit uh, worse for wear, but also just comes out of complete nowhere. It's pretty much able to slope the cars back down to the back straightaway, making them that much more difficult to figure out and master. A lot of drivers trying to keep close eye and tabs on that position and trying to stay away from hitting it. It could be a dangerous rough spot here on the cars, not only them, but themselves. That's a good camera angle right there. You can see just that slight little bend in the corner exit. Now with the safety barrier there, it does not mean any troubles actually for them. It's actually quite safe. But with this car, you still have to watch yourself just a little bit. I don't want to get too crazy or too ramped up and end up hitting that thing. Justin Reynolds already headed into pit road. Richard Crane currently dealing with rounded bow card right now. Burkhart currently moving his chains back five spots down. Maybe just looking at strategy wise in the Harley Davidson's machine. Meanwhile, your auto light number 47 Ford Mustang is your race leader. Joseph Gravala holding the field down. Let's go on board with it. Let's go for a whole lap. Appreciate the comment there, Brent. And now let's take a look here. You see as he gets a little bit closer to the apex of the turn, you saw how he just drives it down, avoiding the exit corner. Now watch how it indents inside, back outside, back inside on the turn number three and four. Rocks the outside wall, but has to bring it down slightly so the car doesn't ramp into that turn or exit. 
keeping the car nice and settled and easy to control. But again, there's only so many times, so long you can do that before you really start pushing your luck and the pressure starts to build up on yourself. Driver's well aware of that. But here, here he's already had a good showing out of his out of his team, out of his crew so far this season in that 96 machine. Looking to try to do it once more here as you got company right behind. Look at this, Brock Page and Aaron Action Jackson going to go at it. Jackson's come close a couple times here on the show to really putting up his fight and putting on his number. And I believe with that yellow strip on the uh, car there, I believe that means they are a uh, playoff driver. I'll get more of that here in the next race or so, maybe a little later on in this one too while we're at it. But Page currently staying with Jackson's line here, looking to try and make use of his car as well as his machine. You're on board with Aaron Jackson. And you can see it right there as well. Another thing that we always talk about here at Darlington is how hard is it to pass around here? Well, to put it nicely, it's like trying to find a, an opening in a need, into a needle stack. You know there is an opening there, and you know there's a way to get through it. It's just you, you want to hurt yourself doing it. It's extremely difficult to pass and extremely hard to master. And there you go, right there on that back stretch here. Good run coming here for Jackson, but Page able to get a runoff on the inside. Pass on the back stretch now for the 62. And the RBX 62 doing a great job, kind of staying to his word, staying to his momentum here, taking full control when he got an opening. In the top 10, Maurice Burnett currently holding 10th up, but Mark Rodigan and Phil Schmitz. Not far behind him, and also dealing with their own little battles here. Sean Burke has a little bit of a run coming off these corners here, trying to get to both drivers, but still nowhere to go necessarily yet. Brent, oh, believe me, yeah, they've gotten a lot better since we started broadcasting, and it feels like it's getting better and better as we go. The only thing right now we're really working on is just making sure the video quality gets as high as past 1080p or even higher, and also making sure we get a new mic someday. Even though I like this mic for racing, I, I can admit up front that uh, we could use a little bit of a better microphone. John Burke could pass there around the number, tw number 76 of Mark Rodigan, looking to hang in there. And Smith's now running the run the ground off. Looks like tires starting to be a factor. Remember, we talked about it constantly with these next gen cars. Was how long before the tires go on the ovals? It looks like a little burn off and a little bit of a tightening of the car is starting to make Maurice Burnett struggle to hang into the turn. Speed carry through. Schmitz moves into the top ten, five spots up from his original position. And the good wrench service plus machine currently just working his way through the field, through the hammers, and trying to see where there's an opening and where there's a chance to be had. Brock Page really not waiting around here. Aaron Action Jackson was passed by him earlier. Now he's going to try to get around Bud Shear here down the front straightaway. And is successful. Shear getting out of the way and does not want anything to do with the, the action of Jackson. Aaron started six, currently moving into the top five. He is one spot up. While the rest of your field currently in a bit of a dogfight here, just trying to get to Gravala. Gravala with a huge lead over everybody right now. But remember, it's one thing to lead. It's another thing to strategize. Pit Road is going to be where you've got to hit your mark perfectly. Uh, ran a little far-fetched in my opinion, but I really do appreciate that comment, sir. It's much different when you're actually in person, I'll say that, but virtually, 
I will say, yeah, it's pretty fun to watch sometimes. I'd say they're about equal. How about that, Brent? And speaking of about equal, Paige saying he's on equal flames with Duru. It makes the pass on down. The Lady in Black looking good upon the 62 as the 11 of Cameron Duru right now struggling to keep up. No, that's not a glitch on your screen for the number there. That is, uh, the, it's supposed to be the 18, but they put a number 11 on that car. That's on iRacing Zen, not us. But so far here in this global strategy team racing league here for the Next Gen Cup Series, the Darlington, it's been Joseph Gravala just continuing to wing this car around. Hasn't really been challenged, nor been really messed with. His best lap time was a 29.5A, and that so far is the fastest of the drivers. So it's one thing to be fast, but it's another thing to be consistent. And he's extremely consistent right now. Uh-oh, as I say that, though. I think, the lit, I think the track that's too tough to tame had to remind Gravala what this place actually is referred to as. Got about 19 laps in before that little hiccup sprung up. And even Strickland passed in by Brock Page now. The Page is just on a roll right now, getting through this field, I'm telling you. I'm not really sure if he's just finding some extra speed or if he's finding some extra ground or where he's going, but it looks like the black strips are now before, about to form here. The lady in black starting to come alive in turn three and four. Red Bull 88 is Strickland right now trying to be the striker that we know he can be and get to Brock Page and Joseph Gravala. But again, both drivers keeping their distance, keeping their cool. Stabilizing it all down. Brent for sure there, sir. Very much so. Smiths now clamoring back. Trying to get to Nathan Bogart in the five here. Bogart, the Mustang driver, heading up against a Camaro driver here. Smith's trying to look for an opening and look for a ride around, but you can see as he drafts off him still, he's having to watch his corners and watch those exits. And we heard some shifting earlier on. Let's see if he shifts into the corner here. No shifting there as it looks like one driver goes into pit road. Ricky Utting in the two heads to pit road. Pretty interesting, Schmidt's not entering into a shift. Usually a lot of drivers will try to keep the RPMs up as high as they can. So sometimes you'll see them shift down into fourth gear, entering in three and four to gain more traction, but looks like they want to stay in fifth, maybe to preserve fuel, maybe to keep things under control. That's a very interesting strategy by these guys, and it seems to be working because Bogart is slowing up a little bit and giving them a chance here. Well, as I say that too, he gives them the door, gives them the opening. You just can't make mistakes like that. Gets them to the front straight away, and now it is Schmitz who moves eight spots up. Hard charger of the night. But here right now, the 95, 96 machine staying ahead of the 11 of Cameron DeRue. DeRue, though, right behind him, trying to hammer down and catch up to him. Get a good look from our vantage point up here on the high skies and throughout the crowd. Absolutely beautiful facility, beautiful place to be had. Never actually been to the Darlington Raceway, although I will say it is on my bucket list and one of the tracks to get down on once in a while. I think I got to put this one up there with like Daytona, Talladega, and. Uh, even North Wilkesboro Speedway. I, yeah, you heard me. I'm throwing that one on the list. I've always wanted to visit it. So you can see it's just starting to become a challenge. These drivers, they're not getting much break here. This, they're getting a lot of work done in those cars. I mean, it may not seem like it, but just think for one second. You see that little hit there taking in the wall? You feel every little bit of that depending on what kind of wheelbase you got and how much force feedback you got in that car. And as soon as you hit, get a hit from it and you take a little bit of a nudge, it literally wears and tears on you and it does quite a bit to you. 
Even Shearer, you can see actually he is shifting in the corners there. You saw him in turn one. Went from fourth gear to fifth in just a matter of an instant there. Try to square off the car and get it more set up for the pace that he wanted to do, and that's how he went into that position. Brett, are you referring to like console gaming or are you referring to like actual iRacing itself? I'm kind of curious on that one. He's saying the this virtual racing is be definitely better than what they offer on the game system graphics and gameplay wise. Curious to know your answer there, sir. I think the ball got a little bit slow off the pace. Christoph Hall taking full control. And so far, the only drivers that have been in pit road is Ricky Utting and Justin Reynolds. Utting went in at lap number 22. Reynolds right now currently in on lap number 29, so we're going to have to see how that strategy plans out and phases for him. Oh, 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 man, you can just see some of these guys just taking a piece of that wall there off the corners. They're not trying to end up there, folks, by the way. They're just driving so hard that the tires are tiring up a little bit and becoming harder to control and harder to master, so... They're just getting a piece of them as they go. Red saying, yeah, console think is better. Good point. And by the way, for those that may be watching on our YouTube later on, this is done on the Facebook Live session. So if you guys are curious to know if what we're talking about or what we're seeing, that is a good way to always join, be in the conversation, be on the fold. We always love listening to you guys and talking with you. If you have any comments or anything like that, or just want to root on your favorite driver, let us know. We'll, 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 let, we'll let them hear you. Richard Crane right now entering into pit road. A little bit of trouble down there for the 36. He'll be our third driver into pit road so far, and I'm kind of interested to see how far that goes from there. Oh, my. That a turn number two, though, and then last, the corner finally got one of them. Aaron Jackson. Snuck right into the mix, into the fold with Michael Strickland. The striker, though, back into the wall. Here comes Bud Shearer looking for the third spot. Double trouble with Shearer now moving to the inside. And he's got to run. He's got to seam. He just needs to hold her down. Gets it going up high enough. It takes the line from Strickland. Now the dirty airflow will take its way through course and down to the field. Uh, Logue asking me what my thoughts are from console versus PC. I mean, coming from console, there's a lot of games that I think look a little bit better on console if they're done right and they're made right. As for PC-wise, I will always say if you get everything put in the way you need to for a PC game and it's, and it's still playable and enjoyable with a good frame rate and all that, I will always say a PC is much better than console gaming for everything and in between. And it doesn't just include graphics. It's literally the physics, too. I'll tell you, it's a difference coming from that to go from console to PC with a wheel base. Let me tell you that much. And if you don't believe me, just try it for yourself. I dare you. Jared going into pit road. So despite that big move he made earlier on, will be for now. He's going to have to try to strategize the car up, and he's heading for the pits. Very interesting timing to go into pit road at this point, at this moment. I'm curious to know what his game plan is going to be here and what he's going to be really looking at. As even now, Joseph Graval goes into pit road. Brock Pace will follow behind. So now that just leaves Aaron Jackson for all the lead. We have a new leader. Down at pit road on lap number 33 here, folks. Charles Van Schaik, though, we kind of forgot all about him. He's not out of this woods yet here. He is coming back here into this position as he's going to head to pit road. One interesting thing here is because, again, you got that banking up on the uh, top half. You got this low, you got this flat banking on the bottoms. It makes it a lot more difficult to find a perfect time to go into pit road. And really, the best way to do it is without a doubt entering in through the exit or entry of turn number three. And that's what everyone is doing right at this moment. Brandon Burkhardt, though, now the last remaining driver. 
10 spots up, stays out, he'll go to the lead. So three leaders so far, only a lap apart though for both drivers. Road again, thanks to his earlier strategy, actually able to kind of whip up and take full control from the other drivers here. Ricky Utting much the same as Burkhart will finally head to pit road. Extremely aggressive pit entry there. About to see if that comes back to Hanum or if that actually will do him some good. Oh man, right into the wall yet again goes at tw was that 20 of road again. If you're wondering, well, didn't you say he was a 76? Well, I did, but let me also show you this. Again, that's what we got on our end for the broadcast here, so. Well, actually, it is showing him in the 76. Excuse me. Yeah, it shows him in the 76, and this is supposed to be in the 20. So we were right. He is in the 20. He's just in a 76 car on the iRacing end. Pecking it around down on a turn number four, though. Ricky Utting in the Pepsi Cola Chevrolet Camaro will now take the lead away. So, four different leaders so far in the last 30 some odd laps. Again, that's why I told you earlier these Chris strategies, they're going to make things a lot more difficult. They're going to test some drivers. And when they choose their marks and when they choose their line, Utting right now is getting a good idea of that and then some. But, Brian, also, going back to your one thing here, I will say one thing iRacing desperately, and I mean desperately, needs to figure out is how to kind of match the success they're getting right now with World of Outlaws and their dirt racing sim to, um, or dirt racing sim Kate, I guess you could say, to what they do here in iRacing. Because right now, iRacing dirt, no offense to my dirt boys, I love dirt, and you know I love it with all my heart, but it has not been fun to race in maybe six to months to a year, actually. Ever since I feel like they made some changes to those late models and those stock and those dirt stocks on the tires and the dirt itself, it just to me has become too hard to pass and just become too much of a, a wasted breath. And there's also a lot of other reasons I'm not going to get into on a broadcast. But when you play a World of Outlaws, though, it's like it's the same kind of enjoyment, the same kind of fun that I had when I first got on. Because I didn't even get on iRacing for anything else but dirt track racing. So I'm hoping that eventually. They can get the tire wear model they're figuring out. I'm hoping iRace can also get a dirt track layout to where it can start building a cushion as you go. And where it slicks up is where you built it from an actual racetrack. That's what I'm really hoping for. So so if that's one thing I had to ask for iRacing right now. Besides some mo different models of uh, the 87 cars, the, the street stocks, asphalt and dirt. That'd be really my biggest thing right now is just get dirt racing fixed because you got a huge community behind that and a lot of folks, myself included, that miss doing it and want to get back to it on PC and don't just want to have to go through console just to even do it. Even though I will admit the console game is extremely fun to do. I don't know. You guys can share your comments in the, in the positions here down in the YouTube chat or the Facebook chat. I'm very interested to know. I do read these things too, by the way, after the race. It's not like I don't go back and look at some of these things. Well, just about 100 laps, 140 laps still remain here. Michael Strickland, the striker himself, currently holding down the 18 of Cameron DeRue. As the 11 machine looks to now pilot it back up to him. Budweiser versus Red Bull. One's got to quit, one's got to give. It's old school versus new school. Andy Rue kicking it old school past the inside. And a beautiful pass there on the inside. Textbook move there at Darlington. Oh, yeah, this is not a two-lane track, by the way. This is, without a doubt, a one-groove, one-line track. Have hey, you tried Derek taking it two lines? You'll have yourself some fun, but I've seen some drivers be crazy enough to, and maybe, I guess you could say, bold enough to do three wide here. They're either rewarded with a show or they're rewarded with something else. And speaking of a show right now, Bill Hales and that 53 making a triumphant comeback and the number 53 still uh, Chevrolet, Chevrolet Camaro trying to get up to the other Camaro driver, Christoph Hall in the Gillette 98 machine.
Coming back around right now, the 83 of Brandon Burkhardt. Spike pitting in early on. He currently has now had to find himself kind of trapped between a rock and a hard place in terms of his fuel strategy and his pit strategies here. Looking to maneuver his way down around the track and across the plains. Every driver for himself here as Hale tries to get to the 98. And again, this is, without a doubt, folks, what we like to call endurance racing. This is it, not about trying to score the mostly laps, not about trying to be the top dog of them all. This is just about trying to survive the Lady in Black's wrath. This track is designed and has been made with the amount of laps to really feast or famine on drivers who dare try to go way too hard, way too strong at certain points when they know they shouldn't and be tested to their fullest potential and limits. Oh, just like that, Hales and Kristoff all bumping around the corner. Hall back into the wall, though. Trouble for the 98. He spins and wrecks it on the front stretch. We've got a caution for the first time today. Come to a dead stop on the front straightaway here out of the gate. Kristoff Hall is going to have to regroup and refire off the Gillette 98. Oh. He's going to do more than that. The right front locked up. That is not a good sign. He's going to try to wheel it back to pit road, but that 98 is hurt. That wheel is not moving, folks. If you don't believe me, here's what it's supposed to look like. Here's what it's doing. Jammed up, wheel locked up, He and this isn't a dirt track. He can't exactly just wheel it around. He's going to have to get into pit road next time by and hope for the best. But first, let's take a look at the pizza instant replay and see what exactly transpired that caused this situation to happen in the first place. It was a hard-fought battle between him and Bill Hales here, but here's what the situation turned to. Came off down the back stretch, see him blocking and defending the 53, but he didn't corner it back in in time, overdrove his corner. He slaps the wall after this little hit from Hales. Gets it back in the gas. There goes the wheel. That's the wheel there. And now he jams it completely. Burkhart watching on, trying to avoid it. Manages to stay clear of it, but not without almost getting himself tangled in that little mess. So we'll go one more on board. Wow, look, look how close this gets. Oh, man, that is a scary thought. Even at that speed still, you're slowing down a bit. It's not a fun thought to be thinking about. I'll tell you that much. Wow, wild, wild little hit there for Christoph Hall. Driver's currently exiting out of pit road. Some had gone in for some fresh tires and some fresh stints here. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But right now, the field... Getting ready to center back off to green this next time on by. Chaos ensuing with 18 drivers in the field. Brent saying in the comments section, the only thing I wish iRacing would do is link up with the Weather Channel so whatever the conditions at that particular location is, is what it will be. Would that be neat? It's a very neat idea, um, idea low, but I think, honestly, it's not too hard to kind of set the actual weather forecast and the actual weather in on iRacing for how it is in general right now. So I don't know how much really use most would get out of that, but it is a good idea. It is a pretty neat idea, though, in theory. Green flag back on now. Here we go again. And for the first time today, someone other than Joseph Graval on the start will be your leader, the, thir the two of Ricky Udding. Is going to force the hand. This is the first time we're going to see Gravala go on offense here. And he looks like he's already setting that up well. The Pepsi Cola 2, deep outside, to the inside. Goes Gravala. Now the run, new leader for the 47. And Brock Page also hanging in there with him. Remember, Brock had taken a good run off of Gravala's speed there earlier. Looking to try to do the same here. They'll back him down to the corners here, trying to hold through. Speeds and maintain a distance right now. Extremely crucial for these drivers. Almost all of them heading in on lap 47, 48, or 49. The only one that didn't was 
Crane and Burkhart as they're trying to get their last back. Cornering back down, three car battle here for the top five. Dameron DeRu Cameron DeRu in the 11 car, the fourth spot back of Strickland and Jackson. And the striker trying to hold the action back of Jackson. Nowhere to go on that run. Brock Page now dealing with some company here in the form of that number two Pepsi Cola machine. Ricky Utting making sure he's ma making his presence felt to the drivers. And there's that shifting I talked about earlier. Some of the times you'll see him do it, some of the other times you won't. It depends on how hard tires get bent and burnt in and then how hard these guys are really whipping it around here at Darlington. Still 130 laps remaining to go though in this race. In the back of the racks, in the back of the stacks here. How about this? Looking for the field. Charles Van Schyke currently trying to stay on the lead lap, but he's got a whole field of drivers to go through. Bud Shearer earlier on up front now finds himself trapped between a rock and a hard place, stuck between everyone else in the mix, and now even getting some bumping from the yak. The aid of Maurice Burnett here, not making it easy for him. Schmitz moving the chains onto the bottom with the 23 of Schyke right there with him. Shearer into the wall. Now goes the opening for the 36 of Richard Crane. Crane able to jump ahead of him. Some drivers right now off the lead lap territory and trying just to keep up with the speed, trying to keep up with these guys up ahead right now. At the moment, everyone that is, it looks like from 13th on to 18th is currently a lap down. So that means Rodigan, Burke, Shike, Crane, Burkhart, Reynolds, all down on the lap, on the lap down category, sadly, and not able to quite get that speed built back up the way they were hoping for at the moment. Nathan Bogart, the number five machine here, is trying to steep the eighth spot in all to himself. Currently, Christoph Hall, though, about two and a half seconds back of him. After that little damage and swing and a hit into the, in the outside wall there, was able to at least get the tire put back together and get the car reset and step back up for his run again. Road again. In the, set, in the 20 machine, keeping the, Cam keeping the Camaro ahead of the Mustangs, but it's right now Sean Burke who is trying to change that quickly as he can, possibly can as well. We get you guys a little inside look too on just how close they're getting to these walls off the corners. I try not to break my cameras while he's at it. Burke doing a pretty good job, in my opinion, right now. Sticking to the field, sticking to his guns here. Looking to get up to the front, trying to get up to the backs. And it looks like some openings being given out there for Cameron D. Rear and Ricky Utting. Utting. Opened the door up to DeRue as he came off of turn number two. Just barely caught the end of it there. But on the back stretch, it was Utting that left off for the 11. And now the Budweiser of DeRue moves back into the top three. Trying to podium it up again today. Strickland now closing the gap back again on Udding here, but you can see just how far you still have to travel just to even make a pass around here. Usually with that kind of speed and the momentum and how close you were there, most of the time you'd be able to be confident enough to take a run out of it in the next turns. But here, nope. 
you try to do in the turns, you risk alienating and destroying your own car. You've got to really set the straightaways up to your liking and up to your bank there. Oh, or that could happen! And again, into the wall protection. It can't be too aggressive to that wall. Again, that those cars and those tires, they will bend and they will break down quite a bit. They cannot let that happen. Field lingering down here. Strickland still trying to get the Udding here. Meanwhile, up ahead, Gravala just continuing to hold the line down. Pressure on now to Bud Shearer. Shearer is still probably getting a little bit more frustrated dealing with the added pressure there. Pack sack rack right now in the field, still trying to get everything they can out of their equipment, trying to get everything they got up on the po on the par here with the deal with on the driver's line. But it's becoming more and more difficult to find your spots, find your openings. But again, it's still a lot of race. Seeing left to go. Ground and pound coming through the field right now here. Maurice Burnett was up ahead of there. Phil Schmidt. Smith's going into pit road. Meanwhile, the 20 of Rodigan trying to maneuver around the eight of Maurice Burnett. But Burnett with some pressure tires able to make his way past on that that 20 machine. Here comes Charles Van Schaik now making a good advantage as well, trying to take some laps back from him. Gets him kind of clipped off the top there. You see, he gets a little bit wide off of turn number two and ends up clipping the wall. Judd again.
fields right now watching for their pit stops watching for their areas here remember we had gone about 40 or so laps in four pit stops were having to be made and movement moves were having to be done to just kind of stay in with the groups Crane running in an 18th slot right now. Surprising because usually Crane has been known to put up a few numbers and put up a few positions here on the show. So kind of surprised to see him kind of so far back and so far behind the speed and the time here. Ball is lead starting to shrink slightly on the stretches here. He's only got about one, only got a second and a third now. Going to be a second and a half. Thanks to that little tag there for Brock Page. Cameron DeRue. Huge momentum gain, big burst of speed, rocks it on the front straightaway, and now a new second place spot up for Daru. And the, again, the more he can keep doing that, the more he can find those little openings, those little spots to take from, he'll take them. Kinda has to, he knows there's a lot of chances in a lot of areas that this can go completely wrong in. right now looking to try to maintain some distance and get up there to Gravala here the field starting to separate themselves out further as we go and you can see a lot of them being very patient and careful not to step on the toes of the lady in black if you will she is currently watching over them with very insightful eyes and also at the same time very uh, dark intentions as the night skies fade off into the distance we'll be heading into the night light here in just a little bit Ricky Edding here trying to move his way back into the pack here. Christoph Hall currently jumped ahead of him and now will lose that position away. Edding will move back to the eighth, but currently now Bud Shearer not exactly letting him by or letting him have any breathing room. He wants to keep a chance out of here as Bogart and him collide there off of turn one, two. Bogart and the National Guard five getting slammed up a little bit on that wall protection. Seemingly nowhere to go and everywhere to lose to everyone right now. Just kind of put between a rock and a hard place. Charles Van Schaik now going to come running right back around the 12 of Aaron Jackson. Schaik trying to hold the line in, trying to hold stability as much as he can. Does get a good drive off. Still though, it's a couple of laps now. That's not gonna help your cause much there, I'll tell you that for free. Nah, at this point it's all about timing and pacing your way around. Looks like Burkhart gonna use all of the bottom lane here. He is on the extreme bottom end of the track. And for what it's worth, pretty good move actually. That's not something you see a lot of. You don't see a lot of drivers trying to use that bottom lane for speed or extra grip, I'll tell you that. Usually most stick to the outside and stick to that line for, for the momentum and the challenge there. I'm surprised it worked as well as it did. Lap traffic now for Philip Schmitz in the 29 here with Mark Rodigan tries to get there back with him through the field and back to the paces. Every drive for himself here. Rodigan still looking to ground the clearance and ground the track here. Hoping to take on Schmitz if he can possibly do it here.
So Nathan Bogart ran down the number five, currently stretched back a little bit of ways. That's Maurice Burnett. Tries to get back up to him there and tries to gain some ground through the field. While at the same time trying to avoid that outside wall. You can hear just how off the throttle right now they are. The track has got some rubber laid down, but it's getting extremely difficult just to hold a line down, much as hold the speed up into those corners. As Charles Van Schaik makes him well aware of that now. Everybody dictating their own strategy, dictating their own moves. Ricky Utting taking the race lead away there from Joseph Gravala there due to the pit strategy. Gravala made a lap 83. Utting went in at 73. 10 laps behind of Utting here, but that again doesn't seem to be messing them too much here. He is currently holding by about a five second gap here. And now as we re-embark on their strategies here and take a look at our times here again, a uh, hundred of a second taken down there for Gravala now puts him at 29.57. But actually doesn't let him to be the fastest anymore. Michael Strickland able to take that down to 29.54. The fastest time laid down for him in this case. Everybody else kind of sticking around in the 29.7, 29.8. Eights, a few sixes in there, and that's kind of how we've been dealing with this race so far. But a very interesting lap set, a very interesting ride off here as we are just now approaching halfway marker. Making it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more tricky to figure out. Again, we're going to take a look at the last times as well here and show you just how much of a difference. These drivers are main. Remember that I just told you about their best laps, but now here's what their last laps look like. You can see right there, those that went into pit road later or earlier are showing their wear and tear and showing also where they're trying to lay down at. Utting, even though he was 10 laps ahead, he is not exactly laying off the throttle. I think a strategy here is to try to stay ahead of Gravala to try and work out some kinks and trying to keep out the speeds. While Jackson now makes a move and a push here from the top five into the fourth spot. Brock Page earlier on made a good run off him. Now this time he's the one that has to take the run and take the work around. He's got some work to do to get back to Jackson. Just here too, man. They just are not giving that wall a break. They don't call it the Lady in Black for nothing, but I think it's about time uh, the lady starts talking to us just a little bit more. Race fans, I think you know what's coming next. Let's hit it on down. Let the drivers do the talking. It's time for some hard action. Back in voice sound key from our crank it up system. Let's bring it on, boys.
Well, you feel the power and you feel all that is going through these drivers' toes and through their cars right now. Certainly it's something to feel and certainly something you just cannot truly experience until you got actually into these cars next to the end of the sim and you really put it up against these boys. Global Strategy Team Next Gen Cup Series at Darlington Raceway right now currently. Trying to put up a number here in the GOAT Racing League as these guys now have passed halfway point. It's been a very, very long road for them, and they know it too because it's been a war zone of nutrition and control. And it looks like they may have got a little bit more of that, but Shearer here, he's back on the lead lap, and I don't think he's wasting time. But he loses a little time there entering through turn number three, slapped the wall. Now he's got to run. Gonna try to drive it hard off. Oh boy. A little bit tight, and again, that snap lock steering ends up setting him straight to the left. Kristoff Hall able to uh, know, uh, know the situation, know what he happened last time, was able to cover for it. Tight little spot, though, to be thrown in. Definitely a bad place to be at, if you ask me. It's the last thing you want to do, and that's the last thing you want to hear, too, is that little hit. There is one good thing about these cars is that they are uh, very doable and durable. They hold on quite well for what it's worth. Just don't slam them too hard, and especially that rear end, uh, as you may have noticed before. That rear end of these cars here are not exactly safety or bulletproof, and drivers have made that pretty clear before, even in the iRacing world. I myself have had a few times where I've taken a few shots in the back. It does not feel good, I can tell you that. Makes my hard car, hook makes the hard whole car just go limp and just absolutely hard to master and deal with. Just no saving it from there. Gosh, a flag out though here. Looks like gosh, and out there on the track. Uh, I believe that was a stage break, but we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, replay just to be safe. Ricky Utting was your race leader. Sorry, we kind of completely miffed on that one there, guys. We were a little bit busy kind of focusing in on our camera systems, making sure everything was up to par. Had not realized that we were actually going to our stage break here, looks like. So, Field is going to re rack, restack, and all that here, and once again, calls this night out. So Ricky Utting going to keep his leader spot, the contender, but now Aaron Jackson going to have something to say about it. We'll pop around down to the corners and back through the fields here. Eighty laps remain, and we'll turn to 79 laps to go. This is going to get interesting. Green flag high in the air. Let's get back to it. Jackson full send through the corners early. Utting trying to stick with him. But sure now dealing with some pesky ordination from the 53. Bill Hales making some work around the track. Every drive for themselves out of the 95 of Sean Burke. Not on the lead lap, by the way, but he doesn't seem to really care or mind too much. A lot of drivers not on the lead lap, and Bud Shearer going to pay for that, too. Charles Van Schaik and the 5 of Nathan Bogart moving ahead of the 96. Trouble for Shearer. He is now losing position to the 29. Schmitz goes ahead of him for fourth, and Gravala looking to double trouble it off the corner number two. Keeps their cool, keeps them in rhythm. Everybody else in the field right now, hunting down the backs, hunting down the field. 
Bill Hale's caught between the drivers on lap tire on the lap tires now. Udding trying to stay with him. Lap traffic right now is giving this track and everyone involved a big finger and I'm not gonna say which one because at this point they are just taking full control of these guys. And what's helping them out is giving them more room. Three wide slid off the corner. Udding, trouble. Udding has got a problem down there. I don't know if that right front is locked up or what's going on, but Udding is going to pit road. Something gone wrong there, and it sounds like a motor might have been given out a little bit, and it sounds like now the tires have given out too. The 11, they're coming out as well. That was Cameron DeRue moving out of the field. Gravala, Schmitz, and Hale taking full control of lap traffic situation, knocking Udding down a few spots. Aaron Jackson staying ahead of the Chorner, staying ahead of the lap traffic. But for how long will that last? He's got him coming up from behind. Oh, hold on down there. A little bit of trouble there in the back of the back. I believe that might have been the end of Maurice Burnett there getting a little bit wobbly and a little wide off the corner. Got between a rock and a hard place, if you will. Up the chains and up ahead right now. Every driver for themselves. Trying to get to that man right there of Aaron Jackson. Charles Van Schaik not giving an inch there to Burke nor to Bogart. And Bogart, I don't know how much appreci I don't know how much is really appreciating that very much. Seems like he's been the one that's getting clipped up a lot all today. Been thrown in the walk and kind of tired down in the turns. And now he's just trying to hold on for what he can at this point. Joseph Gravala. Led the most laps, has been in that top half most of the day. He does not want to lose this one out like this. Seventy-two lap oops to go this time on by. A little hiccup there entering into the turn. Gervala taking a piece of the wall there once again. Giving the, giving the track a little bit of those black streaks and marks again. Bogart still trying to get to Burke. Charles Van Schaik trying to do much of the same here. All drivers here opting to their line, opting to their positions, trying to hold down for what it's worth. That National Guard 5 right now definitely has got to be thinking just a little bit that he is coming up on him and he knows that he is not exactly uh, all alone anymore. Charles Van Schaik here getting some ground clearance on, Bo on Bogart as well as Burke. Meanwhile, battle for second here. Bill Hales and Brock Page closing the gap on Gravala. Gravala, man, he is not getting any inches here. He is getting all it's worth and getting a lot of pressure thrown his way.
Brock Page making a good run there around Gravala, taking control of this one for a little bit. Now we'll see what he can bring to the table. Gravala trying to hang with him. Remember after this race tonight, coming up next, later on at about 7.45 Eastern, 6.45 Central, depending where you're living, Pedal the Metal Racing League returns with the race at Dover. The Monster Mile unleashes the monster within and these drivers and the monster inside the track. Can anyone withstand the pressure? We'll find out in those Pedal the Metal Racing League truck series with the Lightning Raps 100. Back to the action though right now. Gravala having enough here. If Ace throws the haymaker right around town, he goes. And right in front of Bill Hales, problems for Page. He's going to go to pit road. Looks like he might have a right front getting towed down. Speed losing ground here. Gravala definitely maybe not making a friend out of Page. But, I mean, just like we say in Bristol, there are no friends in this series. You make you make your own enemies. and You make your own friends outside the track. Gravala just giving him a slight little hit kick and a little hit there. We'll have to see how that comes back to affect him here. Aaron Action Jackson, though, getting slowed down a slight bit. Despite being six seconds ahead of Graval and them, he is not exactly letting off that throttle. And judging by Pitt Rhodes as well, Jackson actually went in about two laps earlier than Gravala did. And Gravala struggling because of lap traffic and also because of the fact that, well, he kind of threw himself into that spot, into that position early on. So this is kind of what you get out of it and kind of what you deal with. Brock Page is getting back out on the track. I guarantee you that 62 is not forgetting what just happened to him. We'll see what happens as he re-enters the field. Michael Strickland, if you can believe it, in the top five right now. Actually in the fourth spot. Trying to hold on. Wearing off the field right now. Still time to be had here in Jackson with the serious lead though, about five and a half seconds ahead of Gravala and looking to make it even more if he can possibly do so. Nobody left anything to chance. Nobody left anything out for his desire here.
Six seconds ahead now. Jackson is not leaving any room or any chance for openings here. He is just maneuvering this entire field and making sure that they know who's the boss around here, I guess. trying to push their limits and trying to push themselves to their fullest potential. Gravala still holding down something, maybe trying to keep his tires cool enough, trying to keep the fuel run good enough to hang in there. I mean, it's not over until it's over. Let's be honest there. We have seen crazier things happen. We have seen stuff happen that we didn't even expect, nor did we ever even think was even possible. Bale hails the 53 right now, looking to ground off Gravala here, looking for a chance or a shot in the dark, if you will, to get to him. There is an opening or two he can get. He just needs to find a way to maneuver around the circuit, maybe find another shot in the chance here. Gravala's not exactly keeping Hales back anyways. He can still catch him and he can still get around him. He just needs a little bit of a shot. He just needs a little bit more than a, a hit in the wall. He needs a little bit more of a speed boost here and just needs to really keep the ground tires grounded here and hopefully he'll be able to strategize the pit road maneuver. Again, guys right now extending their laps out as far and wide as they can because they know the last time Pit Row was on lap 102, 104 for some, 121 for others. 122 if you're uh, Bud Shearer, and 120 if you're Philip Schmitz. They've got a very distinctive strategy going. And for the record, no, they are not wall riding. That Hitting that wall slows you down. So don't not think for one second that that's actually making them faster. It may th You may think, but again, both guys are going to the wall at the same time. So that's why it's looking like that. John Burke opening up the door here for for uh, for Burkhart, Brandon Burkhart in the A3, trying just anything at this point to get his last back and to get a chance at this. Strickland gonna throw him a lap down as now Schmitz is loving what he sees because now he can take one right up to the 95. Let's go on board. Burke on high defense right now. He is blocking the inside. That forces Schmitz to stay to the outside, having to find a ground clearance. Gonna try to get him a little bit of more speed, catch him on the inside corner panels here. No room for error. Definitely no room for error now. Burke in the wall, and there goes Schmitz to the inside, a pass for the top seven. Seventh position now belongs to Schmitz. Smith got to be pretty pleased about that, and maybe knowing that he's got a better opportunity now to really kind of keep forward here with the momentum and build the speeds back around. A driver I think we're kind of all surprised right now that is nowhere near the top of the pack, considering earlier on Cameron DeRue in the 11, now being passed in the 11th spot by the 8 of Maurice Burnett. 
And the last time Giroud was in pit road was on lap 106. So his strategy right now seems to be just hold, hold on and pray for this one. You heard earlier on him kind of clutching the car in. That's a fuel saving mechanism. Basically what it does is it kills any air, it kills any kind of extra power that is being generated by the oil to the ignition and toward the engine itself. And what it does is when those pistons aren't being able to generate the oil fluids, it then forces everything else to kind of have to stabilize down, have to work from there. About 45 laps remain. Aaron Jackson's in pit road. Michael Strickland will take the race lead away as Gravala and Hales join him. Jackson hard at work right now. I got actually a camera look right now at that tires changes here. He's getting fuel. He's getting full four sets of tires being thrown onto that 12. Pit crew getting him out of there and he's back out on the track. Gravala right now getting his four sets on the front part here. Hales coming out of pit road. Can he get to Gravala before he gets that four set on? He's on. He's going. Hales, not enough time. Jackson already on the back bumper of Schmitz here. And Schmitz is probably thinking, wait a minute, how is this even possible? I went in on lap 20. How's he already on my tail here? Well, 20 lap difference isn't exactly a difference maker there, my friend. Just over 40 to go. Here comes Bud Shearer now around Strickland. Shearer trying to hold on. Back on the lead lap with that pass. Strickland probably not too confused about it. Probably hoping to get back around him as quick as he can here. Strickland heads to pit road now, so the 88 going to have to deal with Rock Page coming up on him. Jackson, though, as closing a gap on the 62, could we see a huge pass be maneuvered? And fuel-wise, I think right now there's enough fuel in Jackson's car to finish this race out. I think the guys were expecting a little bit more help. They're not getting much of it. Pass on the inside, and Erickson Jackson takes full control. My, my, what a maneuver and what a drive off with the lines they go with. What a stunning development and a big move here. Jackson looking to keep his race lead intact and maybe get this win in. He's been to victory lane before, but it's been a while here, and he'd love to change that now. He's had McClenny kind of steal a few from him here from Indy, and he's had a few other of those races kind of taken from him as well. This is a huge deal for him and his team. He's trying to hold it down, trying to stabilize through. But Shearer trying to stay right there with the field. He's in third place with Schmitz closing the gap. Gravala as well coming right for him. Share with opportunities and ch chances to make a run for it here if he possibly can. We'll have to see how it goes.
All right, welcome back here, folks. Had to take a quick break to kind of catch our breath, kind of catch ourselves back off the track here. So I do apologize for that. But nevertheless, Joseph Gravala, Brock Page, trying to hunt down Aaron Jackson by about a 16 gap second here. Gap not making it any easier for them and also making it much more difficult to work around as Gravala head back into pit road with Brock Page as well. So now that will give even more opportunities for Jackson to kind of extend the lead and extend his position. Meanwhile, as he deals with that here, a little bit of company there from Charles Van Schaik. Schaik, uh, not exactly giving him much room there, to say the least. That was a lot less of a gap than I think he was really hoping for and nor did he wanted to see. I'll have to see if that comes back to to haunt him a little later on, but Jackson so far staying true to his speed, true to his word. Rest of your field right now trying to do much the same, Maurice Burnett. Making a bit of a fight, triumphant fight back to the front, back up to the field. John Burke away in his way, gets around them. As Burke now tries to get back on lead lap territory, he does get it ahead here of Gravala. Jax, though, still ahead of him and still ahead of a jump of the field here. And the tail of the tape becomes that much more strenuous and that much more difficult to master here. Twenty-four laps remaining here. Field going off their strategy, going off whatever they can get and trying to make the most of it. Smith's quite a few laps down to Jackson here. Jackson really just absolutely taking control from where Gravala left off from earlier. Gravala, in my opinion, had the first half. Jackson taking over the second half. A little bit of a research, a little bit of a shot in the dark there from Bud Shearer, as I just mentioned his name. There he goes. Was kind of running through earlier on in this field, but Hasn't quite been the same since then. Has been actually more or less kind of tempoed back and really set back in the field and set back in the distance. Christoph Hall heading into pit road now, so that will set the field back up into a charge here. We are down to the final 23 laps to go in the Pole Bull Strategy Team Next Gen Cup Series. This division and branch of the GOAT Racing League here. Same branch, that all, same league that also brings you the heavy hitters on the Tuesday night editions of the Truck Series. The GOAT Racing League Truck Series is coming back to you live here on PTM Racing TV. Be sure to join us next Tuesday as we will be heading on down to Eldora Speedway. And if you guys remember what I said about dirt racing earlier, I'll be right at home there. Road car racing is fun. Dirt road is pretty interesting to see. Asphalt ovals are fun to watch, but dirt racing and on dirt ovals is my bread and butter, to say the least. John Burke right now in the 95, trying to gain back some ground on Gravala. Gravala, though, backing down him off. 21 laps to go, and Gravala... Getting further and further ahead, Brock Page just jamming the lap pedal right up ahead of Sean Burke. Burke had nothing left to worry about there. 
And look at this, Brock Page coming right back for that 47. Remember, that was the same corner earlier on. He got kind of trapped in between. Gravala not going to fight him for it. Page will take advantage and move back into third. And I think Gravala kind of read the writing on the wall there, kind of knew that was not the place to deal with him, and nor was it the time to be messing with him here as Gravala now struggling. Stumbles off turn four, a little problem there. So much on the line right now. A big win for the 12 camps. A possible chance at further cementing himself in the playoffs position right now. And the playoffs have indeed begun as well here, race fans. Currently, when we got into this race today, we're going to take a look at our playoff position to, as well on how that was set and how that is being done at the moment. And the playoff standings entering this round, it was Strickland, Gravala, Jackson, Reynolds, Burke, Hammond, Sturgill, Scheich, Giroux, Hall, Shearer, and Bogart on the top of the leaderboards. Richard Crane, Brandon Burkhardt, Bill Hales, and Maurice Barnett on the chopping block. Right now, the round of 16, they're going to go to the round of 12 in due time. So Strickland right now knows he needs a good charge here and a good chance to stay with him. Action Jackson going to have a lot of points, though, to go with this race and a win with it. That will certainly help his cause and his troubles. Twenty-eight seconds back here for Jackson and Strickland. Just absolutely chaotic and wild to believe. But sometimes that's just kind of how the cards play out for some of these drivers. Richard Crane right now, knowing he's on that chopping block, probably well aware, probably trying to figure out in the next couple of races how he's going to have to come back from it. Gonna be a lot of chances, a lot of opportunities to be striking hard with later on down the road, but at the moment, doesn't seem to really be having much of a chance here at Darlington. And I don't think he's going to either. I think this race might be kind of done and out for him. Cameron DeRue as well, man. Talk about a guy that was literally on that in that position and having a good point state to literally just find himself trapped between an even bigger rock and a hard place. Even though he can still enter into the round of 12 on points alone, he's still going to be finding himself stuck in a very tight little ordeal. When all is said and done, he needs to really kind of rip up the pace, starting to take up some tempos here and temptations when he can. There's going to be a lot of chances for these guys to catch the one another in the future. And we'll have to see more of that as we go along with the season. Justin Carvalho now staying up ahead of Philip Schmitz here. Schmitz trying to desperately get to Carvalho to add on to a points get. Maybe have an even bigger round of 16 set for him. Inside on around the auto light 47 doesn't want to give it up that easily. Schmitz though, digging it in deep, letting it stick. Both guys doing an absolutely tremendous job working the throttle, working the tempo, and keeping each other at each other's pace and at each other's level. But again, Gravala able to stay in the field and stay in the motion, cut the speeds up to a higher level there.
still back and forth with 11 laps to go. And Axton Jackson has got to head to pit road now. This is the this is the opportunity that everyone else was waiting for. Strickland, well aware he's in pits. He's being told by the crew chief, you better start figuring out your strategy too, sir. Oh, but I don't think that was part of the ritual there. Right into the wall off of turn two. And that's going to slow the 88 down even more. And back into a three and four. Jackson now hits his pits. Strickland has got a strike while the iron's hot. Here, he, here comes the striker into turn one. He takes the lead away. But how much has he damaged the car up? Jackson just straight in and out. Perfectly timed. Ten laps to go. Strickland is hurting right now. How much has he taken on the car? And how much is he taking off right now? He is literally just hoping and praying at this point. Surviving whatever he's got. Aaron Jackson passed up by Brock Page. Page is now taking full control. Jackson went from the absolute top dog to now being in trouble here. Page and Strickland taking full control of him. And Jackson in the wall of turn four will not help his cause much here. We've got nine to go. This is why you, you make your strategy and you make your timing on the marks. You've got to hit your spots when you can. Oh, my word, that hit off of turn number four. Brandon Burkhart right now has some problems as well. Heads into pit road, jumps into pits. He's going to have some problems to get cleared up. No caution. Jackson, how much did he damage the right front? He slammed that wall there, I'm telling you. That thing took an absolute hit, and it's still taking some bumps out there. He's just trying to get some speed, but again, you're not going to wall ride and gain speed off these things. Not even Strick was able to get that going. He's losing a lot of time to pay. Here, seven laps to go for the 88. Page is literally going to raw throw the raw power of the raw dog at him. Trying to give it everything he's got, but he's got to be careful. Can't get the car too tight. He needs to stay focused and try to close the gap on Strickland. It's about a 10 lap difference in terms of tire and scope. That could be enough. But with only a few more laps remaining, it's very tricky to get that kind of speed back, especially with six laps to go. And he's still separated out by a margin here. Next time on by, we show you the top five on your screen, but it's a seven second gap between Page and Strickland right now. Strickland looking to finish this one off on a high note. He's got the car locked in. It went from Jackson having a good points win here and possibly putting himself even further into the field to now all of a sudden Strickland taking control of this. Final five laps left to go. And how much frustration is that 12 feeling? How bad is that right front doing right now, I wonder? Looks like it's kind of what looks like it might have been jammed up a bit. He looks like he's steering really hard right now, just trying to get the corner off. I think that right front may be damaged. I think it is damaged. I don't think it's going to be repaired up very easily over the next race. He's going to have some work to do. Down the stretch, though, four to go. Watch the gap close off between Page and Strickland. This could get interesting. Oh, another hit there once again. And that 88 slamming that wall protection once more. Bogart bringing it back out on the track here and sending it on its way down. Let's 
He's clutching in a little bit right now and trying to stay out of trouble. He's got two to go. Page is closing him off. Five seconds now left to go, and he's got even more speed coming. Strickland, you're going to have company in a minute, sir. Could he finally get to him? The green was out this time by. Strickland just got to stay out that wall protection. Entering through the corners. Here we go. White flag high in the air. One more lap remains for Michael Strickland. The striker coming alive when he needed to here. Now can he finish this race? Opportunity at hand. Page trying to get him. It admits what it looks like this is too little, too late. Four, three and a half seconds back. Not enough time. Strickland's got to make a mistake to catch him. Or Hall gets into him. It's not enough time. And it's not going to be off a of corner number four. Michael Strickland strikes the win away. What a finish, and what a race. The lady in black is pleased with her work, and the track that is too tough to tame. Had at least one driver figure it out. Not easy, and it wasn't pretty, but he somehow, someway managed to do it. The striker takes this one home. Michael Strickland will be a race winner here at Darlington. And I think he's making sure that is the case and that is the truth here. Are we going to get some of them famous burnouts? I think he's just going to park it on the front stretch. I think he just want to let this one soak in here. Race results now coming on your screen. Somehow, someway holds him down to the end. Michael Strickland strikes his way into victory lane. Brock Page gets second. Third goes Aaron Action Jackson. Bud Shearer with an impressive comeback to fourth. Philip Schmidt's top five performance there. Joseph Gravala goes sixth, seventh to Charles Van Schaik, eighth to Maurice Burnett, ninth to Christoph Hall, tenth to Sean Burke, rounds out the top ten. And what a drive to survive for all involved. Congratulations to our race winner, Michael Strickland, and what a, and what a race here between everybody involved. It was certainly one for the ages and one to watch. And with that said, race fans, we are going to close this night out here. We thank and appreciate every single one of you for coming on board. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out Battle of the Metal Racing League coming up in just about an hour and a half from now. We'll see you then here on PTN Racing TV.